A beautiful day in the city of Lagos, and you're watching Meet the Boss brought to you by ConnectNigeria.com. I still remain your humble host, William Suzamba. Today, we shall be playing within the tech space. And my guest today is one individual that has done amazingly well in this space we're talking about. Who might my guest be, you might be wondering? Well, sit back, relax. After this short timeout, I shall be unveiling my guest for today. You're watching Meet the Boss, and we shall be right back after this timeout. Looking for the best event? Log on to ConnectNigeria.com. Welcome back to Meet the Boss. Before that short break, I did tell you that today we shall be talking to someone who has been doing something remarkable within the tech business space here in Nigeria. Well, my guest today is no other person than Mr. Sim Shagaya, the founder of You Lesson Now. <laughs> How are you doing today, sir? <laughs> Very well, thanks. Welcome to the program. Thanks, William. I had, to, I had to pause a little there because I didn't know which of the brand I was going to tie you to. <laughs> <laughs> but you're welcome to the program. Thanks, William. And I'm glad we were finally able to catch you this time around, even though we're catching you in your hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> now, sir, hmm. typical with, our, with, my, with my program, each time I start the show, I like to first of all, um, wet the ground by letting the viewers know who my guest is. And I like the guest to me to always do me the honor so that they will hear it as the proverbial saying goes from the horse's mouth. So tell us in your own words who Mr. Singh Shagaya is. Mm, okay, I'm um, uh, from, well, father is from Plateau, mother is from Delta, grew up in all sorts of parts of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Uh, went to Nigerian military school, served briefly in the Nigerian army. Okay. Um, went to school in the States, returned to Nigeria in 2003, and um, have been building businesses of all kinds, generally in the sort of the sphere of media and technology oh. um, since then. Interesting. Which, yeah, starting to, when I, when I put it like that, 2003, I, Oh, okay. Starting to feel a bit old now. Wow, I didn't, I didn't know that aspect of you serving a bit in the military. Yeah. How did you think that experience might have helped your soldier in life? <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of the cliches and stereotypes about the military are true, right? So it's very, you know, military school in Zaria is very tough, rigorous sort of. It's a secondary oh. school. Yes, I know. But by the time you graduate, you're basically ready to serve in the Nigerian Army as a non commissioned officer, true. an NCO. So it's very rigorous, it required a lot of discipline, a lot of uh, uh, persistence and high tolerance for discomfort and mm. regimentation and, you know, things like this. So, yeah, I'm sure a lot of those things have helped in many ways. Beautiful. Now let's go into the meat of the discussion today. Mm. A, lot of people have, a lot of people have referred to you as, as a serial entrepreneur. I mean, the word serial means that individual that does this, does that, sets up this, creates this, creates that in, in the area of business. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a bit of background as to the various ventures and businesses you've been part of over the years? <laughs> over the years. Um, so if I just sort of, a whole range of businesses. So, <laughs> so the internet has, um, the industry has evolved a lot. So we first had sort of, you know, browser based, yeah. Um, uh, businesses, sort of Web 1.0, that birthed a lot of classified type businesses. So, I tried to do a few classified types bus type businesses. There was Job Clan, which was like a job site. Um, it was uh, Alareno, which is I'm probably mispronouncing that. It's Yoruba for matchmaker. It's supposed to be like a oh, okay. matchmaking site, which actually worked for uh -huh. for a while. Yeah, it was out of we built it out of Lagos here, and we actually connected several people who got married on the site. Um, and um, let's see what else. Uh, I in Hollywood, I've you know sort of talked about in the past. It was sort of uh, an attempt to get Nigerians to consume movies on the internet. That was just terribly bad timing. Way ahead of its time. Yeah. <laughs> just way ahead of its time. Um, and then there's a billboard business um, called Emotion um, that d did quite well. I was very proud of that business. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Deal Day, which is a group buying, discounting mm -hmm. kind of uh, uh, site. And, and then Conga, which is, I, I suppose, what um, um, folks kind of talk about um, a lot. Um, and then now you lesson. So, you know, I like media, I like technology. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of the common denominator of all of these things. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's, let's talk about you lesson. Mm. Hmm. What gave rise to the creation of New Lesson and what is New Lesson about? Sure. So 
Um, so, um, first of all, uh, education is something that I really um, am interested in. I have been for, you know, very long. I mean, since I was very young. I love the, you know, I love these institutions um, of all kinds, mm -hmm. from um, sort of primary, tertiary. I, I, I love the whole sort of segment of education. I like being in schools and teaching. Okay. Um, I taught when I was a graduate student in the United States, and I, I found that to be incredibly fulfilling. Um, I thought about doing this also um, before Conga, but the context and the components to do this were not right at oh, the time. Okay, um, so there's that. And then if you look at education, so we're very used to sort of the, um, the educational model of a bunch of young people sit and face one individual teaching. Mm -hmm. um, and that was um, sort of born out of the industrial era. So every child learns the same thing at the same pace every day. Oh, okay. And it served us um, as, um, you know, humanity or society for a while. You know, it's, it's done what it's, mm. it's supposed to do. But technology now allows us to do very interesting things with education. Similar themes that you're seeing in media, yes. right? So growing up, um, you know, we all watch the same thing mm. at the same time, mm. a limited number of channels, you know. We all saw the national anthem at the same time same and time. Uh, seven o'clock news at the same time. Yep. Um, but if you look at what digital has done sort of in this, in the sphere of sort of news, the same thing is happening in education. You provision your own news, you get a multitude of sort of um, sources mm -hmm. and you can tailor your, um, you know, what you consume according to, you know, what your interests are. Yes. Um, the same sort of um, forces are at play in education. Mm -hmm. um, and some other powerful forces also. So, you know, you can take the best instructors, the best teachers, and make them available to a whole wide range of people. Yes. Um, now, educational systems across the world, uh, except with the exception of maybe the Scandinavian countries and a few other countries here and there, um, generally speaking, even the West, educational systems are in crisis. And the same applies. It's even more acute in Africa. It's, it's, it's acute in, in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I believe my colleagues at ULESSON believe that we can use technology and some of the tools that have emerged in technology to do something really powerful in, edu in education and to create a, in, uh, a high quality learning experience that is also very affordable mm. for, um, for, you know, sort of the vast majority of households in Nigeria, mm. uh, across the continent. We're building our service for our first sort of entry into this industry is targeting the senior secondary um, YEC segment. So that includes Nigeria, Ghana, Sierra Leone, Gambia, um, and Liberia. And um, yeah, so this is our initial sort of entry into this market. And we think we can make quite a big dent in secondary education. And then we'll start exploring from there. Interesting. Yeah. At what point did, did you lesson kick off officially? And how has been the acceptance? I know recently you got, you, you, you got some kind of grant towards the push or some mm. kind of investment, investment, a proper investment. Proper yes, investment. yeah. We're a commercial entity. So not, how? Yeah. At what point did it go live? Mm. How has been the general acceptance? Um, so we. So I, like I said, I'd incorporated this business in 2008. Oh, yeah. So weird. it's been sitting sort of on the shelf for a while. But uh, I turned it on um, just a little under 12 months ago, under a year ago. And so for, you know, we sort of dedicated 2019 to hunker down. We built out this, you know, quite nice comprehensive facility in JOS, oh, yes. where the three pillars of U lesson are built. And we dedicated ourselves to basically spending a year building out a library of content that targets every topic in the Y curriculum mm. in math, physics, chemistry, and biology mm. um, from SS1 to SS3. Okay. Um, and these pillars that I talked about are um, um, technology, media, and academics. So we proceeded to find um, the best people we could in these three fields and uh, mix their skills together, integrate them together to create this product that I think, um, well, first of all, it exceeded my expectations for mm -hmm. what we could do. Interesting. Yeah. So we found the most clever, you know, um, young people who had done exceedingly well in WIAC in the universities, straight A students. Okay. You know, it's just results which are staggering. Okay. Um, who could explain very abstract concepts in physics and chemistry and mathematics and explain it in a way that 
is not only effective, mm -hmm. but also engaging and fun and entertaining. Okay. You know, we have this notion that um, learning, really across Africa and much of the developing world, learning cannot be fun. Cannot be fun, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you must learn in pain. It's too serious. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But that, 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 that is just a falsehood. It doesn't have to be the True. case. It, it, there's no correlation between seriousness and True. effectiveness. And then media also, which is one of the things that drove sort of Joss, is that we needed that kind of environment to really kind of hunker down and the serenity of the place. But also, Joss historically has been a media. Yes, a media. As you would know. Yes. Yeah, it's a media. Exactly. Film and music and yes. a disproportionate number of our, you know, uh, ta Nigeria's talent media comes out. Talent yeah, Two-Face, M.I., P square Very all these true. guys out of so there's a, there's this ecosystem system of media there that one could sort of build on top of um, and then uh, and then the technology of course so we've integrated all of these things to an app um, you download the app, but you don't have to stream content. That's very expensive for people mm -hmm. in Africa. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, data is very expensive. Nigerians mm -hmm. are known to switch off their data even True. and only switch it on at discrete intervals. So what we've done is we've taken all of that content and we've, um, we've done some sort of tricks and things to it, but you just plug it into your phone, so all the heavy lifting is on your device. Oh. So it's data free. You don't use your data at all. Okay. You're, you're learning and you're watching rich content and uh, you're not using your data at all. Okay. You, you connect to the internet about once a week or once every two weeks. So we can pass your analytics and your report to your parents okay. and tell the parent that, oh, you know, um, you know, William opened the app today or William hasn't taken his lessons in two days. Or he fast forwarded through this lesson <laughs> or here are his grades and he's doing well and all of these okay. things. But that only happens once, you know, every sort of week or two. Um, but otherwise, it's entirely local to the device. We're, we're quite proud of what we've built, and we're bringing it to the market in February. So. Wow. Now, Sim, um, let's come down home a bit more. Mm. The business, the eco space, as well for startups or SMEs, mm. how would you rate it from your own? I mean, you've been part of it for a good number of years now. You've been part of different products and brands. Mm. How would you rate the SME culture in Nigeria? And what do you think... Uh, the government at both levels, state and federal, can do to sort of help and support mm -hmm. the sector? It's a good question, William. You're asking about the technology sphere or more broadly everything? Broadly. Tech, others. So in terms of tech, um, it's developed a lot since, um, you know, 2005, 2006. I mean, that goes without saying. True. Um, so even just in the process of building your lesson, I actually I'm really envious of the, the folks that are just sort of coming into, the entrep into this industry in an entrepreneurial context now because yeah. it's just so much easier now. Finding product managers and talent is so much easier. The frameworks for creating apps yeah. is so much more robust. You, you know, creativity plays a bigger role now. It's cheaper to start things now also. But these are global trends. Um, in... in you know, there are some things that we really still have to get right, and this applies to beyond tech. Mm. Um, Nigeria, is a, a not, a, demographically speaking, is 200 million people. But there are big challenges in reducing poverty levels, which unfortunately kind of um, continue to increase. Mm. And that's one thing we are actually attacking um, as part of this product. But, um, you know, I think we, if there is one thing I, I think, you know, we can look to, and this was this impacted Conga quite a bit. Is the sort of policy stability of the okay. government and our and how um, coupled we are to forces that have nothing to do with Nigeria, like the oil price. We we have to decouple our fortunes from you know sort of the global winds that just sort of blow us around. Um, and we um, we need macroeconomic stability. Until then. You know, maybe now sort of going into realm of advice, it would make sense for um, any Nigerian business, and it's very challenging for SMEs, of course. But you need to diversify across countries. Mm. It's very, very important mm. because you could you know, suffer a devaluation, you know, tomorrow. And, True. You know, and, True. Well, not immediately tomorrow, but you know, you just don't have that sort of confidence. So. Um, I think it's a particularly trying time for Nigeria right now. The past few years have been. Um, to be fair, I think that the challenges we're facing now are a result of accumulation of decades of neglect. It's, 
um, easy to sort of blame the present government, sure. not that they've done everything perfectly, not by any means, yeah. I mean, I think, but, um, we're f but I think that some of the challenges we're facing, my sense, maybe the optimist in me tells me that we have to go through some of these challenges mm -hmm. um, to emerge a, a better country. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well said. Now, so I have a, a few more questions before we call today's uh, episode a wrap, but uh, I think it's time we go on a short break. When we get back, we'll, we'll, we'll conclude with some other few questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're still watching Meet the Boss, and I still have with me today my guest, Mr. Sim Shagaya, the founder of U Lesson, and we've been talking about a lot of insightful information as to his background, where he was coming from, to where he is today. After the break, we shall look at some more questions before we call today's program a wrap. Please don't go nowhere. We shall be right back. I can tell you directly that Connect Nigeria have helped us to meet over, at the moment, over 900 persons at the moment, now. Uh, we have been able to meet a larger group of people right now, diverse um, people with from different sphere, you know, advising us and also meeting up with them to see how we can connect with them, um, you know, bring them on board where they can also earn something from themselves. So it has been wonderful. Really. Uh, Connect Ninja, I defeat you guys. Thanks for this opportunity. Uh, last year we were selected as the top 100 SMEs, Imagine SMEs, and that was what gave us the opportunity of being here. Thank you, um, Connect Nigeria, for putting this together. It's been rewarding. It's been wonderful. I pray that every other SME out there that are not here this year will make it come 2020. Thank you. Welcome back to the show, Meet the Boss, brought to you by ConnectNigeria.com. We are now in the second segment of today's uh, program, and I still have my guest, Mr. Sim Shagaya, the founder of U Lesson. Welcome back, sir. Thank you, William. Great. Now, Sim, tell us this. Hmm. Where do you draw all your motivation and inspiration? I mean, to have been able to come up with and work with most of these brands that we talked about earlier, where do you draw your motivation and strength from? Mm, well, I, I, I love technology. Okay. Yeah, and I think that kind of is evident. <laughs> um, I was born into an era, um, and I think it's harder for sort of millennials to appreciate this because they kind of take it for granted. But I was born into an era where I saw a world before technology and mm -hmm. after technology. And so that, that sort of magical, so my first computer was bought, bought by a family friend. Oh, okay. uh, uh, an uh, uncle, we used to call him Uncle Samson Umekwe, he's late now. Oh. And he bought me um, a Commodore 64 computer oh. that you could program basic on. I think I was about 10 years old or something. And I remember that I thought it was the most magical thing mm -hmm. ever. This was 1985. Mm -hmm. And um, so I learned to program basic and I would do all kinds of funny things on the family TV screen. and. Um, I used that as the monitor and connected it to the computer and wrote very basic programs like calculators and things like this. Yeah. Um, and so that sort of, I think that um, was the initial sort of wind in my sails. And I just caught on into this world of, you know, I got born into this world of technology. Like many, I think a lot of tech entrepreneurs would say have similar stories. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm constantly sort of looking at the environment, especially in my youth, it's less frenzied now. But when I was much younger, in my 20s, I think, um, sort of early 30s, you was constantly looking at what technology can impact, mm -hmm. um, what is happening in other parts of the world that could make life better for, for Africa, for Nigeria. I think that's one part of what motivates me. The other part of what motivates me, I think, I was thinking about this the other day, it's a really good question, is that um, I saw, I think I was part of a generation that saw the last um, sort of um, chapters of a functioning Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and things kind of went really, you know, south very quickly um, as I entered my teenage years. I saw Nigeria that worked, where infrastructure worked, and a functioning mm -hmm. civil service. And, you know, I just, there was a pride in being in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And I think there's, um, um, there's a part of me, maybe it's a bit romantic, that wants to return to the good old days. Yes, that would do anything to create that context for my fellow countrymen and so to see that again. Um, that's a big part, I think, of... That's good. Of that's good. It's that's a bit good. romantic, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's yeah. a good one. Yeah. Now, tell, now tell me, um, all through your business or journey in life, um, were, there, were there mentors who played 
cardinal roles in your life? Yeah. And do you presently, do you create atmosphere and forums to mentor younger upcoming generations? Mm, yeah, I think yes on, on both counts. I think I'm not as uh, quick to talk about this second as the first. There, there are definitely individuals that played a huge role in my life. Um, there was a chap called, was a guy called Henrik Persson, okay. who not many people talk about in the context of the Nigerian tech startup ecosystem, but he, I think, was very critical, a Swedish um, gentleman, for igniting a lot of the tech companies that you see today in Nigeria. Okay. Yeah, he was a bit of a maverick and very clever, very witty, very no-nonsense kind of individual who, you know, gave us the, basically supported Conga's birth. Um, there was uh, Hakim Bello Sage, who's previously the chairman of UBA, and he'd done some amazing work before yes. that. Uh, yeah. Um, and then I think another individual I'd mention is Nasser Rufai, who um, I had met um, in Boston. He was at the Harvard School of Government at the same time that I was at the business school. So we kind of built a relationship. But I have a lot of respect for him, and I, I think he's always sort of encouraged. And, and then I try and do the same um, for, for others. Um, you can't really have um, substantive these mentoring relationships if there are too many of them. So there's a handful of, or maybe two handfuls of people that I work uh, closely with and I have deep relationships with, but they're, they're very private. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Now let's talk about books. Mm. I mean, you being a techie, <coughs> were there notable books that you would say you read that changed your lives? Or notable research content that you might want to share so that others can learn from Sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, so the books that come to mind um, is uh, a, a book that was published in I want to say 1997 or 98, sometime in the 90s, called The Death of Distance by Pat Patricia Kane Cross. That really, and it was about sort of the rise of mobile networks and the internet and how that's going to shape things in future. So I, I, it really sort of just set me off on this path. Uh, and then there's, um, there's a book, it's kind of, it's a bit sort of controversial. Some people think the ideas are wacky um, um, by Ray Kurzweil. Um, which um, which talks about the, the singularity, this racing towards, you know, intelligence that is smarter than human beings. And okay. some people say we're ten years away. Mm. Um, that's been a big, been a big sort of impact um, in the way I sort of view the world. Now, Sim, let's go back to your lesson. <clears throat> the next two, three, four, five years from now, mm. where do you want to see the you lesson brand? This is your baby product <laughs> that is finally out. It's been in the stomach for a good number of years, <laughs> but it's finally out. Where do you want to see this product? Okay, so I'll tell you how I think about you lessons. So right now what we're building is a library of pre-recorded content. Okay. Content is already recorded. Okay. But that is only scratching the surface of what the smartphone can do. We, you know, you've got this thing, this microphone on the smartphone that allows you to do interesting things. I'll give you some use cases in a second. You've got this front camera and back camera on the smartphone that lets you do interesting things. We see the pre-recorded product as just a platform okay. on which we can build other things on yes. top of. Yeah, uh, The same way that Amazon may have built things on top of books. Um, in, a f in a few years, we hope we would have started leveraging these other powerful tools that are available on the phone so, you know, there, there are Chinese companies, for example, right now that are doing amazing things in teaching English mm -hmm. on the back of that microphone. So um, artificial intelligence and machine learning is sitting on the phone and it's asking you to pronounce something. And then you say it into the phone. Yeah. And if you don't pronounce it right, the computer, not a human being, tells you you've not said it correctly. Um, and, um, but because there's computing at the back end, you can offer these powerful services for incredibly cheap. Um, we think someday in your lesson, for instance, also, say you take a class on photosynthesis. Okay. And then, so you take, the, take this class on your lesson, something you can do today, and then you take a quiz afterwards. We give a quiz after every lesson. Okay. And then say, William didn't do well in that quiz. Mm. I would like to be able to tell you that um, I would recommend that you have a one-on-one -on -one session with this tutor who may be sitting in Accra, okay. could be sitting anywhere, but he's a master at photosynthesis. Okay. Um, so, you know, the combination of all of these different sort of learning techniques, um, pre-recorded video, live synchronous conversation, PDFs, audio, cameras, all of these things, 
we would want to be making use of them more and we would want to have covered um, you know West Africa and East Africa substantially by then wow yeah that's like talking about a, a, a moving institute <laughs> yes. in an app, an institution in an app. Yes, that's yeah, 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 that's great. in some that's ways, great. yeah. Now, Sim, tell us, I mean, looking at you and talking to you, someone would want to easily say, does this guy relax? <laughs> 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 sounds sounds techy, techy, techy. Oh, God. School, school, school. Yeah. Let's build, let's build. How do you relax? You, you, how do you relax? Um, I walk a lot. Walk a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's one of the things I love being um, on the Just Plateau. This is one of the reasons I love the Just Plateau. Oh. Yeah, I walk. A, I hike a lot. I, I can't function if I don't take a long walk every day. Um, I, I I like gardening. Oh. I, I like reading. Yeah, I, I like you know nature a lot. Uh, it's one of the reasons Lagos is, is a bit testing for yeah, me. Yeah, for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, not much walking like, and gardening. How do you now garden and uh, it's a bit yes? <laughs> but I also love my work. Okay. I I love what I do. If if I don't um, if I'm not sort of consumed by my work, so there's no real distinction for me between work and re relaxing. I like I like my work. Yeah. So okay. yeah. But you help, but you social too. Oh well, yes, uh -huh. I have a yes, of course. Uh -huh. Yes. Cool. Yeah. That's good. That's yeah. Good. Yeah. Now, Sim, uh, can, can you, f on, uh, on the final note, I mean, we're on the home stretch now, can you, would you mind sharing some uh, the effect personal friends and family have played in your, in your success so far? Do you think they play any major role in the life of an individual? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you were just talking about being social. I have a, a close group of friends um, that I talk to before I take any major decision. Um, and I've curated that number over, you know, m my life. And it's kind of set now. Um, uh, my parents played a huge role in my life. I mean, I think um, they were very encouraging. It was all about education, education, achieve, achieve, achieve. And, um, and um, yeah, they were a huge impact. Both my parents, they passed away a couple of years ago, um, within a year of each other. Yeah, but they were a huge impact on, on, on my life. Uh, and um, yeah, so that sort of parental kind of role that may not be so much so much there in the real physical sense now it's passed to friends mm. now um so you you want to surround yourself you want to surround yourself i think with people that make you a bit uncomfortable with the status quo oh okay, okay. um push you. yeah push you you want to surround yourself i think with people that lend you to not talk so much during the conversation and want to listen more, you know, because, you know, they, maybe they've sort of they thought about certain yeah, things yeah, more and yeah. they're s smarter or more experienced or whatever. So um, I think you don't want to get too comfortable in life. Every, um, so you want people that make you, you know, muscles are built in discomfort. It's when you exercise, right? Legs are built when you walk. Yes. You know, if you're too comfortable, your status has, Status happens ra yeah. rather, yeah, you know. So you don't want to get um, kind of stuck in one plane. Um, okay, yeah. I get that. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. On that note, I will say thank you very much, sir. Thanks, William. It's been great talking to Pleasure you. Pleasure is mine. And I even got to know so much that I didn't know before. We yeah. from the little research I've done. <laughs> I will be following the success story of you lesson definitely. I'll Hopefully. be reporting and writing about it. As Amen as to that. Goes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, viewers, you've heard it all from my guest today, Mr. Sim Shagaya. He said some beautiful things about his success story so far, how he started, about the U Lesson product, and the wonderful thing he stands to do for the Nigerian market and indeed Africa as a whole. Remember, you can also watch today's program on our YouTube page, uh, uh, connectnigeria.com, and you can follow us too on our various social media handles at Connect Nigeria on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can also follow my humble self, William Suzumba. On Facebook, it's William Suzumba. On Instagram, William Suzumba. On Twitter, same. So if you want to see any wonderful person on this program, do well to contact me. I'll do my best to bring that person your way. Until we come your way some, some other time on this same station, network, as I say, continue to keep a positive mind, and the sky might just be the beginning of your success. Bye, guys. <laughs>